How's it going, guys? Today, we're talking about the prettiest material. It's amazing. It's called polyphenol sulfone, PPSU or PPSF, as it's referred to by some in the industry. It's really a slash in there. Uh, we got a few different manufacturers that make it. It's been around for like 30 years. You might have heard it if you're from the medical field or other fields. You what almost, is it, Riddell? Yeah, Riddell. 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 Yeah. Riddell. Riddell. Um, very strong material, very high temperature material, extremely chemical resistant material. Used a lot in the medical field, but all the, a lot of the strengths that uh, PSU had, if you saw that video, this also shares and just kind of improves upon. I believe it became popular and stuck around because of its use in the medical field. It can be autoclaved multiple times. Where this stuff pretty much got its reputation and reliability is from the medical field. Whenever they do call needing a part or something that will be used in a hospital or a room, they tend to go for this and are already familiar with it. They just didn't know it could be 3D printed. Yeah, one of the big thing, reasons is it can be autoclaved and sterilized. They can withstand huge amounts of radiation. Yeah. Even more so than PSU, it's what do you call it, little brother. Yeah, they're using hot water fittings. You could probably use this to build a sterilization machine, actually. Uh, um, surgical instruments, dental. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I've done, I've used this material for both of those surgical instruments. Yeah. And dental. Or gold tooth. <laughs> Look how pretty this stuff is. Dude, it, it's amazing stuff. Uh, it is an amorphous thermoplastic, which means it's a lot easier to print with less warping, but it's not really easier to print. It still has crazy warping. It has better impact resistance and better chemical resistance than PEI, polyether emit or ultims. It does? Uh, it does. That's impressive. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, I believe it's um, about the same price. It's a little bit cheaper. Uh, fun fact about PPSU is it was actually one of the first materials used for the POG slammers back in the 90s. If you remember those things, the 80s and 90s, uh, one of our clients... say slam like <laughs> yeah. Well, one of our clients used to get um, old recycled PPSU from the military and he melted them down and during that whole craze of the POGs, he injection molded slammers out of PPSU. So, uh... <laughs> I'm more of a keeny man myself. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, that's like super. The it's this stuff's been around for a long, long time. Was it not PSU? No, it was P P PPSU. PPSU, yeah. So this stuff has also been used in the military for a long time. Yeah. It's a super polymer. It's yeah. extremely strong. It has it's a history. Temperature resistant. It's everything you need uh, for a metal replacement oh thermoplast. I forgot how strong this It's actually got the highest T. Ooh. It scared me. It's got the highest TG of all our materials being at 231 Celsius. A solid 14 or 15 degrees higher than Ultim 1010. Uh, 217. 217? Right? For 1010? Yeah, 217 Celsius. You can use your 1010 settings on this material. Same, same temperature, same bed temp, all that kind of stuff, and you'll just get a different result. Right. And I think it is stunt. Look at this. Yes, oh, I believe. Dude. I printed to prove Good. to somebody who was like, can you really 3D print this stuff? Well, did, I don't know how true this is. You might have to cut this out, but they were saying, I have a Stratasys machine that will not let you print below 0.25 layer height. So I was like, it's a challenge. So this is base mode at point, I think this might be 0.06. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. That's really pretty. It's pretty flexible. Yeah, that is that? fine. This is a tube, base mode tube. Look at that, it withstands a lot. And, um, nice. Solve has their branded, you know, like Ultim is just PEI, Red L is PPSU, so, you know, going back and forth. Uh, Red L R7000 are actually specifically formulated for use in aircraft interiors and are in compliance with stringent FAA regulations requiring low heat release, low smoke generation, and low toxic gas emissions. I use this stuff all the time, and I'm learning about this stuff. Dude, That's awesome. This is yeah, super, low super smoke cool. generation, huh? Um, it can withstand continuous exposure to moisture and high temperatures, and still absorb tremendous impact without cracking or breaking. This is actually a, a piece of support for a part we did about a year ago. It handles support really well. It does handle support. Can't show you the actual part NDAs and such, but we can show you the the support, and we can try burning the support just to see how fast it goes out. Why not, right? Low smoke generation is supposed to be self-extinguishing. We'll put that to the test. Rob, would you like to do the honors? Yes, sir. Nail it. Wow. That went right out. 
keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. All right. Boom. Turn the fans on. No nope, fans circulation out. Here. No smoke. God, I love outdoor workshops. <sighs> yeah, it didn't even, it just, wow, look at that, like, turned to ash. Yeah, ooh. That's nice. It smells like firecrackers. It does. Oh, maybe right. because of the salt. Full What's sulfur? Sulfur. Sulfur is what you smell. Sulfur. In, uh, that weird eggy smell. Right. 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 Yeah, it's so satisfying. It smells like freedom. <sighs> smells like freedom. About hundred and ninety dollars a kilogram. This stuff is coming in less than the Ultums and the Peaks and everything else. So if you need a really strong high temp thermoplastic, that's uh, relatively easy to print. Uh, this is a great choice. This is why it handles support well. The, the, the entire, this thing is flexible, you see, it, it's strong. And this printed with simplified support, you know, structure, the way they do it, and just... So, you'll get a neat looking part at the end. If you have to use support, don't worry about it. This handles it just fine. Yeah. You just... You're gonna use the high temps on this stuff. It prints from 360 to 390 Celsius in your nozzle. Uh, you wanna crank that bed as much as you can. We like using 160 Celsius and then crank your chamber as much as possible as well. Uh, 90 or above does provide good results. If you're doing really complex geometries, like if you got a thousand little islands in here and you're making a chemical mixer or something like that, then you wanna have the hottest chamber possible because you will get warping, you will get some curling. It's a little more difficult. If you can print Ultim, this is, you can print this just fine and it's gonna be a beautiful, beautiful part. Yeah, really good stuff. Sounds cool, great thing, awesome. Anyway, uh, if you guys wanna see us print something crazy out of this, uh, leave it in the comments below. We love hearing your ideas and everything. Uh, if you got other questions about the material or about the process or what machines you get to print this stuff because you need it for your specific project, hit us up, give us a call, shoot us an email. We're here to help and we love hearing about your story. This Benchy didn't finish for some reason, but we should show, show them, look how perfect the top layers are and how well it behaves. I think this is one of the snapped filaments. Yeah, yeah. but that thing and the lettering on the bottom, when you get into high temp materials, it's not just about how tuned your printer is, they all behave differently. So for instance, if you have to do really fine lettering like that, some of them are gonna take longer to cool. And this stuff goes where you tell it to go and stays there. I love it, I love it. When it's dry. When if it's dry. If it's if not it's dry, not, it's it won't exactly. do anything you want it to do. <laughs> that was one of those things. Awesome, cool. Well, thanks for watching the video, guys. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you on the next one.